Well, John Rawlings is here now with plenty of local highlights. Yeah, tennis, volleyball, soccer, and even a little bit of cross country for your viewing pleasure. But first we hit the link. See what the LCC golf team has planned for us the rest of the season right after this quick timeout. Sports. The Lima Central Catholic girls golf team comes off another tournament win on Monday and remain a threat every time they hit the course. For three T-Birds, winning has become a family affair. Jack McGuire caught up with the Mulcahy sisters to find out what their expectations are for the remainder of the season. Twins Mary Kelly and Aaron Mulcahy follow sister Megan in leading an LCC golf team that sits 8-1 and one in the Northwest Ohio Girls Golf League. The fact that all three of us are together helping our team um, is really good. Um, but it also, we have a really strong team helping us. We get along really well, so it's uh, good to have an all-around effort that we have. So we just got to keep, keep working on that. It makes it a lot more fun when you're doing good and actually competing against good schools. And I enjoy playing with good players. The T-Birds are 41-10 and 10 overall with the three sisters, only losing to Division I talent and the Division II state runners-up from a year ago. Despite the success, the sisters strive for a state appearance this season. We want to at least get down there, just like see how it is. I know it's, it's really nerve-wracking to be in the state tournament, so we at least just want to get down there. That is definitely our main, at least my main goal, to get there and play our best when we get there. These three talented golfers admit there is some sibling rivalry. There's definitely, we're all very competitive, but um, no, not too much tension. Still, uh, still fun competition, I guess. Definitely between my twin sister and I, we have a lot of competitions throughout the year and we just like the competition. They hope to use the rivalry to push them over the hump into a state championship. My uh, like averages from last year have even um, improved into this year. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm competing against my sisters, but also that they're helping our team. So we have a really strong team. Um, the potential is here. So I guess I'm trying my best. In Lima, Jack McGuire, your news now sports. Great work, Jack. Undefeated LCC travels to undefeated Shawnee for a battle on the courts. In one doubles, Katie Clark zips one down the line for Shawnee. The Indian duo wins 6-2, six, 6-4. Six, one singles, Olivia Kesner using the net to her advantage. Sophomore goes on to win her match 6-1, six, 6-4. Six, and in two singles, LCC's Anna Janowski with a great return past her opponent. She wins 4-6, 6-4, 6-4. Six, six, the T-Birds remain undefeated, handing Shawnee their first loss of the season 3-2. More net sports. Lyman senior also making the trip to Shawnee. First set, Trinity Gearing playing big at the net. The solo block makes it 11-3 in favor of the home team. Moments later, Sakaya Matthews gets her revenge, blasting one off a defender. Lima Senior trails 12-5. But Shawnee was the stronger team tonight. Nora Painter's serve is too hot to handle. Her second straight ace of the game, Shawnee wins 3-0. To the pitch, undefeated Kenton travels to take on Wapkaneta, who is undefeated in league play. True fans sitting through the rain, second half. Wapak with an indirect free kick. Captain Luke Beach finds the back of the net. Redskins tied up at three apiece. Eight minutes and three seconds later, it's Kenton with a penalty kick. Hayden Hicks converts. That's the game winner. Wildcats win 4-3. Elida is also undefeated in the WBL. They square off against Defiance, who is looking for their first conference win. Scoreless first half off the corner kick. Jake Taylor feeds it through to Logan Johnson, and the sophomore puts it in amongst the sea of blue. Elida draws first blood. They go on to win 4 nothing. Bath and Salina are also looking for their first WBL wins as they square off. Second half, Bulldogs with a 3 nothing lead. Logan Kaiser dropping one in with no one around. It's 4 nothing Salina with 24 minutes to go. Less than two minutes later, Kaiser does it again. Puts it over the head of the keeper with the soft touch. Salina wins 7-1. We stay on the grass but move to cross country as Elida hosted their invitational. On the boys' side, Ottaville's Brendan Siefker comes through the top spot, finishing in 16 minutes, 16 seconds. Lincoln View wins the team title. As for the girls, Alyssa Ellerbrock of Columbus Grove takes the cake with a time of 19 minutes, 28 seconds. Columbus Grove takes the team title with four runners in the top five. When we come back, we take a trip to the majors, see if the Indians are still the hottest team in baseball right after this quick timeout. 
Welcome back. Undefeated in the month of September sounds pretty good. The Indians chasing history is that they have won 19 consecutive games dating back to August 24th. The mark to beat is 20. Tonight they can tie the Oakland A's record. The Indians have outscored their opponents by 100 runs during this streak. Can the Tigers break it up? Leading off is Francisco Lindor and he says not tonight. Taking the seventh pitch of the game for a ride, that is his 30th home run of the season, tying the record for most home runs by a switch hitting shortstop. Indians lead 1-0. Bottom of the sixth, Drew Verhagen throws one into the dirt. Carlos Santana flies on across home plate. It's 2-0 Indians. Into the ninth with one out to go. Corey Kluber induces the grounder. Giovanni Urshela scoops it up and throws Miguel Cabrera out at first. The Indians posting back-to-back -back shutouts to tie the record for most consecutive wins at 20. In college football, yesterday we touched on Ohio State's offense. Today the focus is defense. Ohio State is currently dead last in passing yards, allowed at 403 yards per game. And won't have much time to work out the issues in the secondary. However, Army is known to run a triple option offense and currently leads the nation in rushing yards, averaging just over 417 per game. The good news for the secondary, Army has only attempted two passes all year, only one of them for positive yardage. The bad news, preparing for the wishbone offense. Coach Shiano has coached against uh, wishbone teams. I have too, and it's a unique, you know, unique week. You need to spend every waking moment from here until the foot hits the ball to prepare for against the wishbone. It creates its own identity of issues and uh, unique issues, and then on defense, uh, like some of the service academies that I've coached against before, they're uh, three, four all over the place and play extremely hard. And you gotta move forward and move forward fast. In the Reds tonight, they continued their road series, this time against the Cardinals, but they did lose 13-4. to All right, thanks, John. We'll be back with Stocks.